Hi everyone, welcome back. In this particular video, we will be discussing the problem pyramid printing. So let's just directly jump on to the problem, which is given a number n as an input, that is an uh, integer n will be given to us as input. What you have to do is you have to print a triangle shaped pattern. As you can see in the diagram also, it is somewhat triangle with n rows. Rows are nothing but horizontal levels. So if you will try, uh, if you will like just draw the rows, what it will look like. This is the first row, second row, third row, fourth row. So given n rows using stars, as you can see in each row, there are stars. But the important point is in the first row, there is one star. In the next row, there are two stars. In the third row, there are three stars. In the fourth row, there are four stars. And given four, there are four rows because it is given in the question, there will be n rows. And also one more observation which you can make. Since the number of stars are going from one, two, three, up till up till n, the last row will contain n stars only. Or you can say in the last row, the number of columns will be n because each star can be assumed as a column element. n can be anything. So you have to draw the pattern or you have to print the pattern, you actually return pattern in the form of string array. What will the array contain? It will contain each row as a string. So let's say we are talking about n as a five. So what will be the output for n as five? In the first row, it will be a single star. In the next row, it will be, you can say two stars. Then in next row, it will be three stars. In next row, it will be four stars. In next row, it will be five stars. Obviously, there are five rows, so last row will be the row with five stars. So this is the row zero because whenever we talk about the indices in an array, we always start with zeroth index. So from now onwards, you should make a practice instead of saying R1, R2, R3 or row one, row two, row three, you should say R0, R1 and so on. So this is row zero, this is row one, this is row two, this is row three, this is row four. And if I talk about columns, each row is having different number of columns. Or if you will store each row in the form of string, the string length for each row or for each index of the array will be different lengths. That is, for the very first string, it will be only having C0. Then for next string, it will be having two columns. Next string, it will be having three columns. Next string, it will be having four columns. And finally, last string will be having five columns. That is, from C0 till C4. So the point is how to draw this pattern using stars. But before discussing actually the milestone two, there is one more important point. If you will very carefully see the output, you will see that in between stars, there are spaces also present. If you will not enter those spaces, if you will not insert those spaces, your output will look like this. Let's say star without any space, the second star versus if you will draw a pattern with spaces in between them, what it will look like is this, what it will look like is this, what it will look like is this. So there is a difference between the pattern without spaces with the spaces in between two stars. So let me just draw in the diagram also. What we have to do is after each star, we have to add a space irrespective of whether we add a space in the last star in each row. It does not matter because anyway, there are spaces after the last star. So a space after each star will be present. You can assume this after each star, there is a space and I'm denoting spaces as dashes because otherwise you won't be able to see spaces. Now let's discuss the approach in order to solve this. So since we have to first of all return an array of strings, each of these rows will be strings having different different lengths. First thing what we need is to create a string array of how much size of n size because there will be n such rows n such strings. So create a string array. Initially, what do you have to do is you will have to go to each and every string and construct it because otherwise you won't be able to construct the entire pattern. So you have to think in terms of string by string or row by row. So in order to think row by row, you will have to run a for loop or run a iteration over each row. And in order to do that, the easiest way will be to use a for loop itself. That is, I will go to each and every row starting from R0 going till R n minus one, because if there are five rows, it is the zero row till the fourth index row r0 till r4 now in most of the languages if you will create a string array what will happen is each of those elements will not be an empty string or it will not be something which you can apply operations on it will be something like null or undefined so what you have to do is you have to go to each and every string that is what you are doing in this loop 
and initialize those strings first of all by an empty string of zero length. So you will initialize the string, the current string to be empty. So let's say the current string I am storing it in the current variable. However, for current string, you will have to use the string at row index as empty string. Now that you know the string is empty initially, you will construct the string. So for the zeroth row, how many columns are there? One column or you can say till column zero. For R1, columns are till C1. For R2, columns are till C2. For R3, the columns are till C3. For R4, columns are till C4. So in general, what can we say? That column will always start from C0, but it will go till whatever the row index is. If row index is 0, the column last column will be 0. If R is 1, last column will be 1. R2 having C2, R3 having C3, and so on. So for the constructing of a string, we need another loop, a nested loop, which will work on the columns of that particular string. So inner loop will be working on the columns, starting from 0th, because always the 0th column will be the starting. Till what? Till not n minus 1. It is not always 5, 5 stars. It is the rowth index. So I will go to row. 0 till row, not also row minus 1, but row only. That is till 0, including 0. Till 1, including 1 for R. What we have to do? Whatever number of columns we have, we have to add that those many instances of star space, star space. Let's say the column value is 3. So we have to add 0, 1, 2, 3. That is 4 times star space. First time, second time, third time, fourth time. In your output, in your string at the row. That is in R3 string, add star space for c0 star space for c1 star space for c2 star space for c3 so for each time what you have to do you have to concatenate or you can say append what append a string which is star space so i'm just denoting space like a dash again however when you will be writing the code obviously you will add a space by hitting the space bar not a dash given that this is the entire code or the instruction manual the pseudo code what will be the time complexity and actually there is only one such solution existing since for each row we are working for different number of times if we will calculate the total number of times we are working or total number of iterations we are doing for first row we are running iterations for one time or printing star space for one time next row two times next row three times next row four times up till up till in general nth row and here was five so last was five times in general, it will be n and can be anything, 100, 200, anything. So what is this sum of series, which is 1 plus 2 plus up till up till n? That is sum of first n natural numbers. If you know about secret n series, the sum of the series is n times n plus 1 by 2. And if you will try to answer it in terms of big O notations, which you might have already learned how to answer the time complexity in big O notation, you might have seen that if you will just break this term, it will come out to be n square by 2 plus n by 2. Now what we do in big O notations is never take the smaller powers of n because we always take the biggest growth, the biggest power of n, which is n square right now. n square growth is quadratic growth, which is more than linear growth. Even in n square growth, we will never consider constant values. So 0 0.5 or you can say divided by 2 is a constant value. So in big O notation, the time complexity will be order of n square, where n is the number of rows or the number of stars in the last row. In general, quadratic time complexity. What about space? There are two ways you have to answer the space complexity. The first way where you have to answer the space complexity is nothing but including the output space, including the strings which you are creating. So if you will include the output space, what will be the space complexity? Since the strings are of 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then finally for 5 lengths, or you can say, if and if you include spaces, it will be 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 lengths. It will come out to be n into n plus 1 only, which will still be n square only. So considering the output, it will be quadratic space because you are nothing but creating a matrix, or you can say array of strings, which string itself is an array of characters. So array of array of characters, or you can say a matrix, 2D array. That's why it is quadratic space. However, if you will don't include the output space, sometimes we only talk about extra space, then there is no extra data structure as such which you are creating. You are just using two variables, one variable for the row, one variable for the column, and that's it. That is constant space, which is for extra data structure, for auxiliary data structure, and for the output, we are returning a matrix or an array of strings, which is quadratic space. 
So that was all about the problem, the instruction manual. And let's just write the same thing on the editor also. So what I will do is I will create a string array. I will create a string array of n size and obviously of all the elements being null or undefined, something like that. So in order to initialize or in order to create strings for each row, we have to run a for loop mm -hmm. over each row. We are just revising now. So run a for loop over rows from zero till n minus one because we are starting from zero because in string array, the indexing will start from zero. However, first of all, inside this for loop, what we have to do is initialize the string, initialize the string at the rowth index, at the rowth index in the answer in the string array let's say string array is named result in result as what as empty string so i'm just writing in the bracket empty string of zero length zero characters zero stars initially then what you have to do is to produce that many stars in that row you have to run a loop over the columns so run a for loop which is an inner loop there are nested loops run a for loop over columns from zero not till n minus one but till row index only because it is a triangle, not a square. And what we have to do inside this inner loop is, in order to show it is inside, I am having a indentation so that it is inside that. So what we have to do inside the column is, in the string, in the current string, in the string at row at index, we have to concatenate one time for each loop we are doing, for each iteration, we have to concatenate star with a space, star with a space. And I am showing space like this. And now that we have the entire thing, we can just return the answer. We can return the result. Now we will be using that instruction manual in order to write the code in Java programming language. So what you have to do, we have to return the output, not just print the output. It is also given in the note. It is mandatory to return the array in the below function. Printing the answer in console will not work because if you will scroll up, what you will see is in the main function, whatever pattern you are returning that pattern is being iterated and you are just printing that each string or you can say you are just printing that each element each string in new new rows because you are just using println function so n can be anything starting from 1 till 99 that is in between 0 and 100 so what we have to do is we have to create a string array of n size that is given in the instruction manual also the string array which is of result name you can name it as anything but it will be of n size and in Java, what happens is if you create a string array, each element will be a string, but what will be it initialized as? It will not be initialized at M, as empty string or zero length string. It will be initialized as null. Each element of the array will point to a null object or null string. In order to make it start from empty string, we have to run a loop over every string. That anyways, we have to run because we have to construct the pattern. So very important thing is if you will directly just start from null string and you will, will try to concatenate stars, it will give you null pointer exception. So in order to get rid of that, what we are doing is running a for loop over each row, starting from row, row zero till n minus one at row. That is still less than n. You have a choice whether you want to do it less than n or whether it you want to do it like less than equal to n minus one. Both are one and the same thing. Whether you say less than five or you say less than equal to four, it is one and only. The same thing in each string what we have to do we have to initialize it with empty string now because it should not be null so for that what i am doing is result at the current row at 0 1 2 and so more so on all the indices they will be initialized first with empty string then we can concatenate the characters by running a loop over columns but remember in the approach we discussed number of columns depends on the row index and equal to the row index that is starting from zero till equal to row, less than equal to row. If row is zero, we will run the loop from zero till zero. That is one time. If row is one, we will run the loop from column zero till column one, two times. If I can show you in the diagram, row is zero, one time from zero to zero. Row is one, column from zero to one, two times. Row is two, column from zero to two, zero, one, two, three times and so on. For each time, what we have to do is we have to just concatenate a star with a space. If you will remember, if you will not add the space after the star, the pattern will look different and it will give you a wrong answer. So we are to concatenate 
the star with the space. So concatenation can be used by this compound operation, which is plus equal to in the same result, I am concatenating the string, which is star space. And finally, after the entire pattern is printed, you can return it. That is return the result. So let's just see if it is going to work fine or not for each and every test case. Let's do it for the 4n, that is the sample test case. As you can see, it is working fine. And as you can see, in between stars, there are spaces also. However, if I take this n value as only one, so there should be only one star present because there will be only one row and only one column. So let's see if it is going to work for this corner scenario. Yes, it is. Even for very big value, which is let's say 99, the biggest n value which can be there according to constraints, it should have 99 rows starting from one star till 99 stars. Let's see. So obviously it is going to become very, very big, but it is going to work. Let's submit it and see if it is going to work for all the test cases or not. So it is taking some time. And as you can see, all the five test cases are getting passed. What is the time complexity of this? Since we are running a loop over n elements n rows and then running a loop over in worst case n columns. So it will be n times n, which is n square. However, in the approach video, we discussed by using the summation of first n natural numbers in bigger notation, this for loop will still be n square only that is quadratic only considering concatenation is a constant operation. However, it is not in Java. If you just really want to use constant concatenation operations, you can go ahead with creating an array of characters, array of array of characters. That is instead of string, what you can do is you can use this, this syntax. But I'm not complicating the thing right now because we are just solving a basic pattern printing problem. For now, we can just consider concatenations to be constant because the strings are not of very big length. The strings are only of at max 99 length. So the overall code is having quadratic time complexity that is n square time complexity and the space for this particular problem. Considering the output will be quadratic because it is a matrix only. If you will look carefully, it is a matrix of characters or an array of strings. So considering output, it is quadratic space. Without considering output, if you only talk about extra space, auxiliary data structure, there is nothing. We have not created any extra data structure to solve this problem. So constant space for extra data structure.